What is up, everyone? We battle barely battle ready post SLO. Chuck and I are here to discuss our event statistics, our lists, talk about some fun stuff that happened, talk about the good, the bad, and the drunken. And yeah, the, the uh, ugly yeah. equals drunken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about our lists, the people we played against, uh, the kind of things we encountered, maybe how we can improve our gameplay, uh, the things we learned in our matchups. I, I learned a lot. I had a lot of uh, duplicate kind of matchups, which was interesting. I, 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 le I, yeah, I learned a lot. I was a little I'd, overconfident in a couple of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I honestly, this tournament, you know, to your point, I, I feel like I learned more from playing these games back to back than I have in any other tournament, honestly. Like, I had something dawn on me that we'll, I'll talk about later <clears throat> because it has to deal with one of my games that is seemingly so simple, but I never really paid attention to it. And then it really made me focus on that aspect in, on Sunday. Which I think came into play. I, Ooh, I know it I'm came curious. into play. I'm so. curious. You got me on the edge of my seat. <laughs> All, right. All right. So let's let's go through your list. What did you bring to the tournament? So I have a little bit of history with my list. I want to talk about first. So I started playing competitively in February with uh, my Silver Boys, the Grey Knights, the Psychers, the Defenders of the Imperium, the Secret Service, the FBI, the Xenos Killers, the Heretic, Ordo Hereticus, all, like all to, those things. I like to call them the, the uh, Coors Light of um, 40K because they're all silver. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, yeah, I brought uh, – I've been constructing Grey Knights lists for, you know, six months competitively, and I'm not the best player, but – I found that there are some things I really like to run in lists mm -hmm. uh, that may not be particularly competitive in some aspects. But what they do is they, they play with your brain. Or they don't play with my brain. They play with my opponent's brain. And I like making them overthink their decisions based on some of the things I bring. So uh, I brought a brotherhood that I've only just started playing with, the Rapiers. Uh, they have uh, very melee-centric psychic powers. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they're very melee centric. Their their brotherhood overall, their psychic power is plus one attack for the unit who casts it. So I run MSU, so I'm gonna get a maximum of five more attack. It did make a difference quite a bit when it did go off. The uh, hammers, five hammer attacks, is better than four hammer attacks because then I hit at least once. <laughs> uh, their their stratagem is exploding sixes in melee. That one I used as like a oh, I have a chance to do, I like. I need like one more wound maybe, or one more mortal, right. mortal wound from Tide of Convergence. Uh, it was it was good. It added a little bit more, you know, melee damage to what I feel like isn't good enough with halberds. If you're not running swords, halberds just don't have AP to chew through, armor of contempt, and deal those wounds that you need. Is it neg two? <clears throat> yeah, it's neg two. Neg two. Same. I yeah, I have the same problem with uh, my axes from Custodes, right? They hit at strength 8, which is amazing, but it's neg 2, which is not amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when they punch through, man, and it hurts, but yeah, that extra point of AP is really nice. I guess so, it, we'll it, no, I, I think the one thing about that is, I know from my perspective, for me, between uh, the spears and the, and the axes, it's like, okay, so axes are going to wound easier. Potentially, you know, depending on the target. Uh, it's just that they're going to make more saves, right? So which one is actually the better option? You know, harder to wound, easier to save. Yeah, yeah. And then that, my, my philosophy is six is higher than five as far as strength goes because they're plus two, minus two, two damage. Mm. And if I'm ever going into elves, you know, or sisters, Ooh. moving on twos feels really good. Yeah. So that's, that's like... Before Ember Contempt came out, Halberds were just all around the best because they had that flexibility with the, the two damage on wounding. I'm sorry, the uh, the uh, six strength for the, the toughness three model, or even the toughness six stuff. Wounding on fours is nice. Yeah. Or, or going versus Custodes, wounding on threes is nice. You know, and yeah. Mike two is exactly where you want to be versus Custodes. 100%. So I have loved Halberds. It's how I built every single Grey Knight model, other than the ones with hammers, because I love hammers more, but they only give you one in the box. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be all hammers. I would pay I would pay 400 points for hammers. If I <laughs> oh, that's uh, funny. 
But yeah, there's a. Uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting trade off. But okay, we'll start with the list. I haven't even said anything about the list. Yet. Let's go. <laughs> well, let's we know it's rapiers. Yes, rapiers. That's all we know. Um, at the very top of the list, I have an agent of the Imperium. My boy, you know him, you love him. He hits on twos, he wounds on twos, but he always misses. <laughs> the Vindicare Assassin. I love running him so much because you can deep strike him. If you go first, you don't know where he's going to go because you're playing off your opponent. If you go second, you the same thing. Then the opponent has two turns to be like, oh my god, where's he going to come in? Where can I put my characters? Are they safe? Mm -hmm. Nowhere's safe. Nowhere's safe for me targeting you. But everywhere's safe for me wounding you. <laughs> Especially with Armored Contempt, man. Bringing people to five-up saves uh, in Marine Armor, like that 33% of the chance, you know, I just don't wound after getting the big damage. However, he kind of popped off, and we'll talk about him later in my matchups. Wait, I doesn't. I thought he ignored invulns. Oh, he does he ignore invulns. It's just that, yes, yeah, right. Armor contempt. That's the issue because he's only neg three, right? Neg three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, my list is displaying weird for me, but that's okay. I'll get through it. So I have the uh, Brotherhood librarian. The I don't know what you call him. The tactical nuke for Grey Knights. You know, he's like he Doctor Manhattan. In. Yeah, he comes in. You don't know where he's coming from, and then he just nukes you with some psychic powers. He did really well. I uh, I, I have a hard time not including him in this list because I don't run things that deal very well, in particular, with like T8 and above. Um, so he kind of helps me deal with the knights and the land raiders, and I learned the Lehman Russes now, too, because those guys just have a two-up save all the time. I can't touch that with my shooting. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the Librarian, he'll always be here. I tried something different this time. I put a Coray of Sacrifice on him. This is a relic that gives him plus one to his saves and a five up feel no pain. So Armor Contempt with the Coray of Sacrifice. And if I'm in Tide of Shadows, I'm at a negative one up save with a five up feel no pain. It's disgusting. This That's... guy lived through way more than he ever should have. That's spicy. Yeah, yeah. I had... Uh... <clears throat> ah, I'll get to that later. That's a <laughs> get ahead of myself. Get ahead of myself. I'm just so excited to talk about all the things. Uh, I, uh, my brotherhood tech marine, he was here to support, uh, you know, the Dread Knights and mm -hmm. um, another unit I'll get to. I just I don't want to spoil it. It's my other favorite Grey Knights unit, uh, but we'll get to him later. <laughs> uh, he just had warp shaping, so he let me change a tide of battle. Tech marine, honestly, I don't use him well, and I found a strategy that I like with him, uh, taking behind enemy lines, teleport him in the backfield. Make him kill a tech marine, like focus some fire on a tech marine. I don't care if he died because I'm not doing anything with him other than changing the tide. Right. It's, it ended up working out. It was funny. And he's got a tiny base so I can fit him in a corner and just score points off of it. Uh, Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight. Three up, there's a three up invuln once per game. The teleport away when you shoot at him. Everyone's favorite, favorite unit to overthink as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it played against me a couple of times. I. I have a lot to learn with, with this. <laughs> I've got uh, three squads of strike squads. Uh, minimum squads of five of them, all with halberds, because halberds are the best. I've got two paladin squads, uh, also MSU, so three of them each. Um, normally, I put a hammer on the paragon, because five attacks with a hammer is, is five attacks with a hammer. But... Unfortunately, uh, I couldn't swing the points. I already took away some other points elsewhere, and I just had to fit these. I love them. They have armored resilience, so they're also at that negative one-up save and mm -hmm. tide of shadows if they're being shot at. It's it's amazing. They're stupid durable, um, and they just soak. They soak damage. People are like, oh, I could shoot some interceptors over here, which have 12-inch movement, or I could shoot these negative one-up save terminators, and they shoot them every time. And I'm like, yes, this is exactly what I want you to be shooting. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. Shoot the ones that I can't, that can't die. Uh, <laughs> interceptor squads. Uh, I run three squads of five. I want to bump this number up, but I don't know where to trade points out for, especially with this list. Um, I run them with three halberds, a hammer on the Justicar, and then warding staves because I built these in eighth edition when warding staves weren't trash. Mm -hmm. um, now it costs me a CP to do what they used to do. Uh, Ooh, the, hold on one second. I just yeah, thought yeah. of something. Hold on one second. Sure. Oh, yeah. I forgot the koozie. 
I, I gave away all my koozies except for the tall can for Vizzy's on stream. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> what I did, too. <laughs> so I just have I just have the Salt Lake open one. All right, we'll get some more made. These are all, like we said, very little test runs anyway, so. Yeah, I know. I gave I gave away one of them that had the red underlines, and I was like, no one else is going to have this. This is an exclusive. It's ex <laughs> exclusive. Yeah. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Continue. Yeah, so three interceptor squads. They do the things. They're fast. They can score points pretty easily. Uh, the Nemesis Dread, the regular Nemesis Dread Knight was a teleporter just to complement the first Dread Knight. It's nice to give the Tech Marine buff to him. And put him next to my big Dread Knight because he gets hitting on twos, rerolling ones, which feels pretty good. Yeah, uh, because granite shooting is so bad. Like I need to punch as much as I can with the, with the three shooting options I have. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last option, you love it. It's the big Storm Raven gunship <laughs> with the multi melpas, <laughs> the heavy plasma cannons, and the storm strike missiles. The thing is just so funny. So what I was saying about my paladins, where they'll shoot them instead. The storm raven is the paladin to my dread knights. So instead of shooting dread knights, people shoot the storm raven. Yeah. And it's great. It's just everyone, like, no one knows how to target priority against grenades. Well, at least the people that I played against. Um, and it's tough, though, because it's like if a Storm Raven just going to fly around for five turns, it's going to blast something off the table every turn. Yeah, and if you're not careful, it lands right behind a character. Yeah, you yeah, know? and I'll talk about that. I Oh, I no! Oh, no! Oh. I did some really mean things. I was character <laughs> hunting all tournament. And that's exactly why it dies first. Yeah, yeah, and and I actually had this crazy play. Uh, I'll talk about it later, but I'm just gonna just mention it. I remembered that I can embark things into it, and that came into play to score me like ten points. And it was like, oh, yeah, it Ooh. was a huge swing. It was a huge swing. Nice. So yeah, that's uh, that's the list. It's everything that I've been building my Grey Knights towards over the past six months. Um, with a Vindicare and a Storm Raven still snuck in there. I am very just, curious to hear how the Vindicare did because, like, I want to take one. I want to bring one with me. But, like, every time I do, it's exactly like you say. He'll hit, and then he doesn't wound. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I Yeah, I, he he swung. He swung hard in both directions. Yeah, he's swinging. Um, there was one other person who brought a Vindicare, and he was playing on the table next to me. So he brought out his Vindicare, and I brought out my Vindicare, and you're like, yeah! Uh, <laughs> Vindicare brothers, high five! <laughs> the only two Vindicares I will ever exist in a tournament. <laughs> yep, so that's uh, that's me, Chuck. How does, how does your list look? <clears throat> oh, so I brought the true and tried list that I took to War Games for Warriors, except for... That was pre-nerf or points adjustment balance. And uh, so I took a battalion of Emperor's Chosen. And Trajan, the man, the myth, the legend, was the warlord. I spent the CP that he refunds to take his warlord traits. And then I took a shield captain on bike. Uh, gave him the full suite of options so he had tip of the spear the captain commander upgrade so he rerolls once to hit and wound when he charges or heroically intervenes uh he had i spent a cp on him to give him a relic which was the castellan's mark redeploy i spent another cp on him to give him a warlord trait of superior creation which gave him a five up feel no pain and i spent another cp on him to give him a, a radiant mantle which is a minus one to hit in close combat and in, in shoot, just minus one to hit in general uh, so I gave him a full, I fully buffed him up because one of the things I learned from playing was I was, How I didn't really CP need a lot of that? CP. It's three. Three for one dude. Oof. Yeah. And, and then I spent another one later in my list on Eternal Penitent for one of my Dreadnoughts. Because like, honestly, like starting at two, I didn't really feel bad because the, what I learned, and, and I'll get this, I'll get into this later, but there's so much, I'm telling you, I learned so much during this tournament and I don't know where the clairvoyance came from, right? Like, what was it that kind of just was the catalyst for me to be like the light bulb to turn on and be like, oh my God, why haven't I been thinking about this? And I mean, how long, we've been streaming for a year. How has it taken me a year? And then before that, I've been playing for like almost 10 years. And then before that, it was like way back in the day. But anyways, uh, so yeah, uh, shield captain, fully decked out. Trajan is the warlord. For troops, I took two units of Sagittarum, two three-man, 
and one unit of sword and board. And I really love the combination of the two. Even in the armor of contempt, I find that, uh, you know, yeah, Sagittarium shooting at distance sucks against Marines, especially if they're in cover. Especially if they're in cover. But against a lot of other matchups, anyone outside of armor of contempt, they just shine because that neg one, two damage just works, especially at 36 inches. Like, you just can't hide from them. So those are my troops. And then for elites, I'm taking, I took three Dreadnoughts, I took one Galatus, uh, and two Achilles. One Achilles had the full complement of Adrathic Destructors, so it does three damage shooting across the board. And that was the one I gave Eternal Penitent. So it has plus one attack, make it bump it from five to six. And then also it gets to reroll charges, which will come into play later, hilariously enough. Uh, and then as for fast attack, I took one five man bike squad. And then for my heavy support, I took one Caladius tank, and that's that's the list. It's it works very well for me. I find that it's very well rounded. It plays well into most matchups. Definitely, there's ones that uh, they suffer at, but I don't know something about it. It's like comfort food. It just I've played it so much that I feel like I play I just played differently with this list than I do with some of the other ones that I've tried. And and I, I'm sure I'd feel the same way if I did like the whole bi the bike list. I'm sure if I just kept practicing with that. Because I've been thinking about it. I've been basically playing this this list for almost I don't know, like variations of it since the book came out. And this is this is just what it's honed down into. Cause I used to take two two three man units of bikes and then it has slowly just kind of shrunk into one five man and and again like those cp that i start with and stuff all comes into play later as i'll discuss in my games but yeah that's that's the list as i have it as it right now that makes sense and yeah i guess i forgot to talk i start i left two cp open uh specifically to put the storm raven in reserves mm. if i yeah, as a as a precaution yeah if you go second <laughs> yeah yeah um so this like this is kind of crazy. It, it ends at 118 PL, which what? Obviously, power level isn't a good indication of you know actual army strength. But yeah, it's 118 PL, Grey Knight's list. Let me, what is mine? Mine is 97. <laughs> 97. Like whenever it's funny you make a mention of this because every time I build I build a list, I'm always like, can I get it to 100? Can I get it to 100? I feel like 100 because you know like back when eighth or yeah eighth was like they went to the, talked about match points and power level they talked about how like 100 pl is basically 2000 points so that's why I like target mark even though it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at yeah. all yeah i i used to play a game with mike we would submit lists to each other just to see who could get the highest pl out of a list for 2k points uh, there's ways to cheat it right you put like one extra dude in a squad and it doubles the amount of PL yeah 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 that, that's the crazy thing about this list is it doesn't do that at all. It's 118 just, is really high. It's crazy. I don't know why it's that high. I think it's because the Storm Raven got points nerfed, but they didn't touch the PL on it. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Well, it's I mean, we think about that, right? In power level with that, you just get all those guns for free. Yeah. 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 Oh, so. I, pa Paladin Squads. The three-man Paladin Squads are 13 PL. I think that's the big kicker. Damn. 13 yeah, power level? Yep, for three dudes. Interesting. Okay. So take me through uh, your game. So how... So you played all nine games. All nine games, yep. Right? So, for, so Friday, three games. Saturday, three games. Sunday in the uh, the pod at RTT. Yeah. So tell, yes. take me through day one. Who was your yeah, first opponent? Do, I'll do my day one. You do your day one. Or right, should we do it by battle round? I don't know. That's fine. Let's do it by battle round. Let's do it. So round sure, one. Yeah. yeah, round one. Uh, I was. We came into this tournament. I had high expectations of my matchups. I'm like, man, I feel really <laughs> good versus a lot of armies. There's a lot of armies where I'm like, I have a game plan. And then I hit Tau in round one, and I was like, oh shit, Tau. I I have a very bad, just taste in my mouth playing against Tau. But this was before Armor of Contempt. Armor of Contempt changed the game for me against Tau. I had, really? Yeah, it was huge. It was a huge difference. With Armor of Contempt and Tide of Shadows, I'm always outside of 12 inches. So it's either minus one dense because Tide of Shadows, because I'm in a building, plus light cover if I'm outside. So it's like, 
their neg three is only neg one. Their neg four is only neg two. I ha I actually can like shrug off some of this damage. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah it f it was weird. I was surprised at that I still had models left at the end of the game. Uh, so yeah, the first game I played against Tau Sept is a pretty standard Tau Sept list: uh, Cold Star and Ethereal, uh, a single battle suit unit, uh, two broadsides, long strike. Uh, another, sorry, two battle suit units. There was two battle suit units in this one, uh, and then a, a hammerhead and a devilfish. And who is your opponent? So it was Jonathan Barber. I don't he's recognize the name. Guy. I think he's, I think he's a, a newer to the tournament scene. But oh, nice. Yeah, Very cool. cool uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I, I'm not super familiar with Tau, and I've always struggled killing their suits. And that's the thing I want to kill the most. Mm -hmm. uh, he had five characters, though, and I'm like, I've got a Vindicare. He's got an Ethereal. This is this is an easy, you know, this is an easy 15 assassinate. And that, well, that didn't end up happening. <laughs> it kind of did, actually. It actually kind of did. So I took for the, oh, let me bring up the missions. Hold on. We played in reverse order. Yeah. The, uh, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So we yeah so for those so we 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 started at thirty three which is the last mission secure missing artifacts and then we worked our way backwards for because there's what there's nine missions right exactly nine missions nine missions yeah yep. so secure missing artifacts this is the one that you move the two objectives you get to pick the priority target objective for your opponent and if they hold it they get points if you hold yours you get points mm -hmm. um, the center of the battlefield would just pretty much barren because that's how Tao likes to set up terrain 100 percent it was rough it was rough man i could not get to him um it was a, it was a good game though his his characters kind of moved around my vindicare came in turn two had a dead shot on an ethereal he took a wound he was down a wound so he only had three left and i'm like three is the amount of wounds that vindicares like to kill at because d3 damage is average two plus a headshot which is a you know 66 percent chance that i hit yep. one I'm like, cool. He doesn't get a save at all because I'm neg three, and he has no invuln. Yeah. No well, invuln anyways. Um, so I'm like, cool. Vindicare right there. Boom. <clears throat> hey, buddy. You got him. He's right there. He's out in the open. Dead to rights. Lookout, sir, didn't even apply. He didn't even need to ignore lookout, sir. So Vindicare shoots at him. I miss. Oh. Uh, command like, reroll? This, this is, I get, a, I get a CP back if I kill him. So I Ooh. command reroll it. I command reroll it. I hit. Okay, anything but a one here, Drake. Anything but a one. Roll it. It's a one. <laughs> it's a one. And that's just the most defeating, but it's also the most, like, common thing if you're ever playing a Vindicare. This is just yeah. what happens is you roll ones to wound. Uh, it feels terrible, but it is what it is. So, yeah, my Vindicare shot at him, missed, and that was that. Uh, his ethereal ended up living almost till the end of the game. I did end up getting him though. Uh, the game came down. It was like, a f it was a very, very close game. Um, was this the first game or the second game? Oh, did I'm getting mixed up. I'm getting mixed up. I had two games. It was back to back Tau. So I and the lists <laughs> were very similar. <laughs> the lists were incredibly similar. Uh, this one, it, it it just came down to me having some dudes on the main, the, like the middle objective. Mm -hmm. I just kept pushing things there and pushing things there, so we had to keep shooting all that stuff on the middle. Yeah. Uh, I ignored I ignored long strike. I ignored the hammerhead. They only get one shot each. No big deal. Uh, yeah, they killed my dudes and like my uh, dread knights like super easily. Um, the broadsides they didn't do much. I ended up just making invuln versus them, which feels good, man. Um, <laughs> but there was a moment. Oh, this was also the second Tau game. Dang it, Tau! Why'd you have to go back to back? <laughs> well, it's funny that you know. First of all, try like if you're not taking notes down in your games, which clearly I didn't, especially on day one, which we'll get to. Uh, oh yeah, your day your day one is my day two. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, it was brutal. Uh, trying to like filter through all of those hazy memories and go back to those games, I was like trying like there's key moments that definitely stick out in my mind, but to your point, it blends together very quickly. And yeah. hilariously enough, we had 95 players. There was eight Tau. Yes. And you played back yes. to back Tau. I played. We'll talk about this in round two. There's a story behind me getting back to back Tau. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, it was. I, I, I. This was like one of the worst case scenarios. I guess for my list, I don't want to go against knights all that much. I just have very a very poor record into them, and gray knights just don't have the damage really to yeah. deal with them effectively. At least I can't figure out how to make it happen. Um. And Tau. Tau is the other one that I just don't want to play against. I will go against any other army and be fine for the mm -hmm. most part. But Tau is a struggle. Not not as much as I thought it would be uh, with Armor of Contempt and Light Cover and Tau of Shadows and all that, but it was not. Uh, Tau is just tough because I got to get to them and it's hard to get to them if they, if they sit back. Yep. Which they do. Yeah, so yeah, game one, uh, it ended up, I ended up taking it, I think, like, 89 to 76 or something. All of my games were within 15 points, except for the very last one, but we'll get to that later. Um, I had I had a great, I just had a great tournament experience. Again, all the games were great. I played against awesome people. I'd only played against one person I'd played against before. Um, but yeah, we're still in game one. I'm getting ahead of myself again. <laughs> How'd your, how'd your first, first game go, Chuck? Chuck, I barely even talked to you the whole event. We just kept getting games. I know. Far it was, away. It, yeah, we weren't even near each other, I don't think, for most of the uh, tournament. I think there was one time where you were like two tables away, but yeah, that's too, yeah. way too far in a tournament room. Uh, so, weirdly enough, or coincidentally enough, my first game was against Tao as well. So Really? Yep. I played one of our locals, Tyler Helvey. And he was bringing, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Tau Sept. Let me double check that. Uh, yes, it's Tau Sept. Uh, he had uh, Anva, uh, the commander in the Cold Star battle suit that's unchargeable. Uh, then he had Dark Strider as well, uh, which was different because he's the only, only Tau player I played that had Dark Strider, which is going to tell you how many times I played Tau. How, what is a Dark Strider? I don't know what that is. Dark Strider is like one of those special characters that they have. He's a named character. <clears throat> I want to say he's like, uh, what are the recon guys? What are they called? Stealth suits. No, no, no. I thought they had little guys that were recon guys. Maybe not. I could be mistaken. However, I don't know all his rules, but he has some interesting auras and stuff like that that came into play during the game. Uh, but he took those three characters are his hq he had two breacher squad two 10-man breacher squads and then he had a 10-man strike team uh the breacher squads had drone uh, marker light drones the strike team had two marker drones and then he had two crisis suits uh units one was decked out with plasma <clears throat> and fusion blasters the other one was all flamers and both of them had a bunch of drones so the one with all the plasma and pu fusion had five shield drones, and then the other one had three shield drones. And then he had a unit of four marker drones that were just their own unit for fast attack. He had two individual broadside battle suits, both with shield drones. I didn't know you could take a single broadside. I had no idea. I thought that was really cool. Uh, and then he had two devil fish, and also brought shadow sun. And so. He started with three CP. I started with two CP. And weirdly enough, you know, w the way this mission worked, and exactly like what you just said, there was no terrain in the middle of the board. It was just a center objective. And I was like, this is bad, right? Like, uh, I don't know exactly what to do. <clears throat> I went first. So I was like, I can't step out into the middle. Like, if I st anything that moves out of cover right now is just going to get obliterated. So basically, my whole first turn was just realigning my units, raising banners, because my secondaries that I took were grind them down, which is pretty much what I took in almost every game. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about why later, but I took grind them down, I took assassinate because he had so many characters, um, and then I took banners. And then, so in my first turn, I just realigned my army to kind of like you know, raise banners on both objective markers, kind of reset my bikes to be a counter charge unit, and then waited. Like, there was no, I literally had no shooting, none. I did not want to put anything out in the open because I knew the problem with Tau that I have for Custodes, they can move faster than I can, and I am already pretty quick, and they have better range with their plasma than any other army. So, like, it's, you just can't hide from those suits unless you really use the obscuring. And so I just realigned, and that was the end of my turn. Well, Tyler, 
<laughs> he's he's not a dumb player. He realigned and was like, your turn. And I was like, oh no, it's going to be one of those games, right? So turn two, because Chuck started drinking, <laughs> it was YOLO time. <laughs> so I just threw everything up the board, right? Like dreadnoughts ran forward, bikes went up one of the flanks. And there was like one of those uh, unstable position, like little wall sections up on the top. And it was like near his far objective marker. And all he had on it were, I think, one of his breacher squads. And I was like, okay, I'm like eight or nine inches away from the breacher squad. I just got to make that charge and I clear him off that objective marker. And then he's got to go back after it, right? What do you think happened? Bikes failed to charge. CP reroll failed to charge. I was like, uh oh, <laughs> this isn't good. But I made it to the center objective. So I had my sword and board on there. And then I think I had one dread towed in on it. And then the other ones were just pressing forward as hard as I could. Because I knew I couldn't come out on piecemeal. I've made that mistake way too many times. Uh, his turn, he murders all my bikes. All of them. So they literally did nothing. I lost 400 and something points out of the gate. They moved. That's it. That's all they did. And at that moment, I was like, I don't know how I recover. I've lost all my mobility. And, you know, like, I'm staring down the barrel of all of these Tau now. And luckily, the game, it was so close running throughout the entire game. His, uh, I, I was trying to get at his plasma suits, but he kept them hidden very well. And then he moved up the flank that the bikes died on and just started obliterating everything down the sideline. But the good thing was, is it pulled him way out on the flank, and I was able to stay in the middle. So when he moved his uh, unit up, he shot at my Sagittarium that were hiding in the back on my objective marker in my deployment zone on one of the ends, and he didn't kill all three. It took him two turns with his plasma unit suit to kill a three-man Sagittarium squad. And I think that is really what did it for me, because I was able to hold more. I only beat him because of primary. And it, it was it was one of those crazy games where at the very end, you it comes down to like, can I clear off? He needed to kill one unit of mine, just one, to be able to deny me, grind them down. Again. Uh, and so like, it came down to just dice because I don't think any of either of us had any CP left and it just didn't work out for him. I made the right saves. He didn't make enough wounds. And then it ended up being a 74-65 victory. Because I, honestly, going into the game, after my bikes died, I was like, I'm going to get rolled. Just rolled. And and just, it worked out just right. I was able to apply enough pressure upfield that I was able to hold the middle and those two objective markers. And that's how the game ended. It was a, it was an amazing game. There's so, oh man, I had so many games. Exactly how you described where it really just comes down to the last... Like, literally the last turn. Yeah. And those are the memorable ones, though, right? Like, those are the games that you play for. It's not fun if you get tabled or if you table somebody. Like, when those games get over like that, it's... Okay, you don't get to learn anything, first of all. And then, second of all, like, you know, it's not the ideal scenario because you want to have a good game, and it's more enjoyable when it's those back-and-forth moments all the way up to the end. All right, so we both played Tau. Both played Tau round one. Um, I was, I was like, I felt good. This was the first time I'd ever beat Tau. No other game has ever been close because mm -hmm. it's all been versus Tally. <laughs> uh, but I felt, I felt good with the Tau, and I was like, oof, okay, I got that's my Tau tax. We're done playing Tau. No more Tau for me. So Matt, pairings go up for round two. And I see, oh, cool, I'm on the same exact table that I played on. I don't have to move. This is great. Aaron Aaron Nafla comes over with his Imperial Guard, and I'm like, I've never played Guard before. This is going to be interesting. It's probably kind of similar to Tau. Because shooting, you know, that's all the yeah. like, T3 bodies and a bunch of shooting. So we get into, like, two minutes into deploying terrain, and Mario's like, hold on, everybody. Oh, I forgot. Stop what you're doing. The pairings are messed up. Someone dropped. And so I was like... Does this mean I don't get to play versus you? And he's like, yeah, probably. So we're all just like eagerly awaiting and looking. He's like, pairings are up. So I take a look at my phone. Look at the guy. Brent Martin. Okay, I've never played this guy before. Who is this guy? Submit or view list. 
Tau Sept. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Remember, on the same table again. Only eight Tau players out of a 95 player field. And I hit Tau. And then and day one, it was all random pairings. Yeah. There was no ranked matchups or anything. It was all random. Well, actually, I think it was, it was random by win loss. Yeah, random by win loss. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I get paired up under this guy, Brent. And I'm like, man, Tau. Oh, God, not again. This is. This is gonna be. I just, I was just exhausted from the first game. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, we had the lunch break and all that, which is fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, introduces himself, goes through this. I'm like, oh yeah, this is very similar to what I just played against, except he has two Riptides in his list, and I'm like, oh god, Riptides. They're like knights, but Tau version of knights. How do I yep. deal with this? With drones. Um, yeah. Well, actually, he didn't have any drones, which was <gasps> which was awesome for me. Because I could actually it's like a deal cardinal with it. sin. It just be I know, right? It was great for me. <laughs> um, yeah. So the second mission was uh, death and zeal. Mm -hmm. So we've got that very tight deployment in the middle. Yeah. But I, I am so conservative with my terrain placement now, especially since I'm spending two CP to put my storm raven in reserves. Yeah. I, I really with this list and with gray knights right now, I really play towards turns two, three, and four, and hope that I've just done enough to kill them off the board with both deep striking units and the storm raven coming in from strategic to shoot at something and mm -hmm. and all that this game i my storm raven killed it did zero damage the whole game and by the whole game i mean the one turn that i lived for it was brutal my vindicare couldn't do anything he kept missing all his shots <clears throat> um it was it was a crazy game he he we ended up uh Fighting over the middle for a little bit. He had some crisis suits. He only had one squad of crisis in this one. Uh, he brought him up on that like top left objective. Uh, he sent two breacher squads down to the bottom right where I had two strike squads. He ripped apart a strike squad. My other strike squad with the volume of fire of storm bolters and a support of a dread knight uh, wiped out 20 breachers in one turn, which was amazing. Also, this game I took grind them down. Don't you should not take grind them down versus Tau. <laughs> you shouldn't do it's, it. It when is. You said you took it, Chuck. I was like that's. I learned that lesson. Yeah, uh, and I'll talk about that and then my in my in my in here in a minute. But yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> yeah, grind them down is not a good one. It, it was it was a it was the most fun game I had the whole tournament though. Brenton was an awesome guy. Uh, we were having a great time rolling dice. There was some just wild stuff happening. His dice were hot. My dice were hot. His dice were cold. My dice were cold. We were just throwing stuff at each other the whole game, and it came down. This was the best moment of the whole tournament. I, I lost the game by a single point, and <laughs> and this is why, this is why. I sent my Storm Raven to go assassinate a single model from a fire team unit in the backfield objective. I had to like tip him over the uh, edge of the terrain so he could see underneath mm -hmm. the into the building. So my storm raven is chilling up there, he's trying to blow out, tr trying to blow away this fire team unit with one dude left. He fails. Everything fails. I miss one single dude. Long strike is sitting there right next to him. I put some stuff into long strike earlier. He was on one wound left. Uh, so long strike with his one wound. He's like, okay, boom, one CP fight at top bracket. He moves long strike over within six inches of the storm raven. This is important for later. He blows the Storm Raven out of the sky with his one shot. And I'm like, damn, I just lost grind them down. And that's the game. But then the Storm Raven explodes. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and the Storm Raven explodes hard. It's it's six inches for D6. Woo! Long strike was within range of that. And the strike Marie, the strike Tau guy was in range of it. I roll, I roll my mortals for long strike. He's at one wound. I just... Or no, he was at two wounds. I needed anything but a one. Anything but a one. I roll a six. Boom. Long strike's dead. Strike, dude. I roll a six. That guy's super dead. And I was like, that's three points for grinding them down. I think I squeaked out the win. So we're tallying up points. It's super duper close. We're, we're looking at everything. We come out to 86, 87 me. And then we found us that, that mystery, Death and Zeal. You get two points 
for killing an enemy unit within range of an, ob an objective marker. So we're like, wait, does this count? Does an aircraft count as being in range of an objective marker for those two points? So he called Thomas over because it mattered. It was those two yeah. points. It was a one point game. He called Thomas over and he's looking at it and we're, we're, we're explaining it to him. He's like, the Storm Raven was here. He killed the guys there. I got points for grinding them down. Does he still get points for direct assault? And Thomas is like reading through it. And he's like, yep, he gets the points. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> but you got it too, though, right? Oh, but no, because it wasn't my turn. It, oh, it wasn't my turn. you have to do it on your turn. Oh, yes, yes. Interesting. I would have scored. Because it would have been net zero then, right? You'd have still been ahead by one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I would have scored two points as well if that had happened. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it was, it was, it was wild. It was the most hyped thing ever. I was cheering. My voice was gone at this point already. <laughs> like Tony was behind me. He's like, "What's going on over here, guys?" Uh... I'm like, "Dude, my Storm Raven just blew up and killed Long Strike and that guy on the back objective." <laughs> I think I just won the game. It was crazy. That's funny. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. I had a game like yeah. that, but it was later in the tournament. I'll, I'll get there. But um, yeah. that's awesome. So what was the end result again? End result was 88 for Tau, 87 for Grey Knights. Oh, man. And did you go first or go second? Uh, I went second in every single game except one this whole tournament. Wow. Wow. That's Actually, brutal. No, I, went second. I went first in two games. I, the last two games of the tournament, I went first. Every other game, I went second. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, uh, my second game was against another local, Zach Zulo, the man, the myth, the legend. There was a, Ooh. yeah, there was a. I love I, Zach. I love oh, he's that, great. He's, he's so great. Awesome. I've played Zach previously in another tournament, uh, so I knew him. But what was funny was like uh, my team, you know, like uh, Rumple was like every time he sees Zach's name in the uh, uh, attendees. He always makes a call out in our, our Discord channel because there was a long period of time where, like, he signed up for, like, every single tournament. And then, like, he didn't show up for some. Yeah, and yeah. so there was, like, this there was like this speculation of, like, does Zach really exist? <laughs> it was like a figment. Yeah. And, and for a minute there, he was he was the bane of Wasatch Warband. He, he, we played, like, two or three RTTs in a row, and all of us lost to him, like, hard. Uh, he's good. He's good. He plays Orcs. And yep. so uh, he was playing Death Skulls. It was a weird game. So there was a lot of models. And for secondaries, it took grind them down again because I figured, like, I'm going to kill more than I lose. He didn't have a whole lot of shooting. His list, uh, he had a war boss. He had a weird boy. He had some beast snagger boys, regular boys, four units of Gretchen. Burna Boys, Commandos, two units of Mega Knobs, a knob with a wall banner, Tank Busters, Storm, three units of Storm Boys, two Battle Wagons, and three Mech Guns. So his Mech Guns oh, is what yeah, I was... He did talk about the Mech Guns. Yeah. The, uh, the what, Super Random. The, yes, the D6 shots, D6 damage ones. They do, yeah. And, and so I was concerned about the cannons, of course, the Mech Guns. Uh, but he went first... And most all, if not all, or most all of his army is obsec, which is which is a real problem for me, because I only yeah, have yeah. three units that are obsec. Yeah, dust skulls. Any any boys' bodies, any infantry are obsec. And this is where I also learned how bad Custody's secondaries are. So my three secondaries were grind banners and stand vigil and something you're going to hear very commonly throughout all of my matches is like grind them down is pretty much uh, I, I almost take it every single game um uh, banners is kind of my last resort when i just don't if the army that i'm playing doesn't give me something like a boar the witch or something like that that i can really lean on banners is kind of my go-to uh it's not my favorite but it's better than engage or retrieve or any of those for me because of the way my unit composition is. And then I took stand vigil, which is kind of like stranglehold for custodes where you just got to hold more in the open in the no man's land area than your opponent does. And you get three points, but it's at the end of the battle round. So your opponent pretty much, you know, has, unless you go, if you go second, you have that opportunity, but it's still dangerous, right? 
Uh, depending on the mission, of course, as well. So anyways, we play the game. Um, one of the big mistakes I made was he had his war boss was on one wound. I threw Trajan into him in close combat because I didn't kill him in close or in shooting because I didn't shoot at him because I was like, oh, I'll just clean him up in close combat. He fought on death and killed Trajan. And I was like, that was not Wasn't a good the trade. Brutal, the brutal but cunning. Yep. Yeah. With the attack yeah. squig. It's, I was like, I made a horrible mistake there. And I realized it after I got into combat with him. I was like, why didn't I just shoot him? Like, why didn't I just shoot him to death? But I didn't. And I lost Trajan because of it. And I was like, oh, that's terrible. And orc secondaries are pretty good the orc like get the good bits get the good bits is good did he take um i got i got it up right now actually he got psychic interrogation and i can't stop that age. oh no i'm looking at the wrong look at my next matchup whoops <laughs> but like yeah, he Probably he good bits and, uh, green tide yep i'm pretty sure he took green tide so at the end of the game i basically tabled him I mean, he had like little to nothing left, and he beat me ninety nine to seventy five. Yeah, yeah. Orcs score, orcs score early. They score fast, and you gotta stop it. Or I, I, I couldn't like I, I couldn't take objectives from him because he had all obsec, and he has got a lot more bodies than I do, and I couldn't kill enough fast enough. This is where like my bikes having hurricane boulders would have been amazing. It would have just been cleaning up units. But instead, you know, my rockets, okay, I killed two or three orc boys. Woo! <laughs> like, not great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if I can close on them, great. But, I I mean, I killed so much. So much. And so even if I don't take grind and I take no prisoners, sh you know, like, I even if I, if I maxed it, which I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I maxed grind. If, if maybe I didn't get it one turn. But... It just wasn't enough. I, I mean, it was. A, it would be net almost. It would be maybe plus three points. So it'd be ninety nine seventy eight. I just couldn't keep up with how fast he was scoring points, and it's just so many bodies, and the attrition hurts me so much more. He doesn't care if I shoot at Grotz. He's got forty Grotz. Right. Like. And the Grotz are scoring good bits. Yeah. Every at the end of his turn, I can't stop him. So. He just was getting so many points. Zach is always a pleasure to play. I played him once prior. And so we're one and one. I beat him the first round. He's beat me the second round. Looking for that tiebreaker. Coming for you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, it was great. It was a great game. Learned a lot about playing orcs. Because I don't get a lot. Honestly, I don't get a lot of reps against orcs. Yeah. Yeah. And, up here and we, we just have Nathan really who plays orcs. I don't know anybody else. I, think, I mean, I play orcs, but I don't have enough. I mean, I got rich, right? But I, I mean, I never draw rich unless it's random in, in the early round. And like, that doesn't happen. I've, I literally have never played rich in a tournament ever. And I've only ever played him one time and it was on the stream. And he clobbered me there too. <laughs> yeah. So, how about your third game? Who'd you play next? Third game. Uh, I went into a kid named Zeke Carl, 14-year-old kid out from Washington. I was like, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Came out, he came out with his dad to come play in a tournament in Utah. He was a really cool kid. So soft, though. And it was round three, and I was exhausted. I had the hardest time hearing him. And he would say stuff, and I'm just like, <laughs> go for it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I should be making a saving throw. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what uh, you were telling me. <laughs> Yeah, he's a su he's a super cool kid. We had a great game. Um, I my my secondaries is what did me in here. So uh, he was playing Black Legion. Yep. Uh, I've never played versus Black Legion before, but that's that's a Abaddon's Abaddon's boys. Mm -hmm. uh, so he brought he brought Abaddon obviously, uh, a Dark Apostle, uh, a Master of Possession. So he's a standard, you know, caster chaplain, Chaos HQs. Uh, he brought Cultist Squad. Uh, a squad of five legionaries, um, a ten blob of terminators with uh, the black rune of damnation, all the gross things that all those yep. terminators can do. Um, let's see. Uh, a ten squad of chosen, which were funny. I we'll talk about why that's funny later. Uh, two hell brutes, which are kind of like dreadnoughts for chaos. Yep. From what I Multi melta and. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God. One of his, one of his ones popped off on me. Was it the pink one? Uh, he had. I don't remember. I think it was the blue one because I killed the pink one on turn one. 
Uh, a Master of Executions, which had all the nasty things that make him do a bunch of mortal wounds. He didn't get to use him because he failed his five inch charge twice. Whoa. Uh, a Venom Crawler and some Warp Talons and a Rhino. So this was, what was this mission? 30. Tide of Conviction. Tide of Conviction, yes. So Tide of Conviction, this is a very good Grey Knights mission. All right. Grey Knights like to do two things not go in the not go forward and do actions on objectives to score purify rituals is what i took because there's three objectives right next to my home field so i can easily score you know put or potentially score four points a turn just for staying back right banners i take banners on these types of maps too because it doubles up like yeah i use turn one to do a bunch of actions to to put banners up but turns two three four i'm doing purifying rituals with as many units as i can to get that off um, which I don't even think I maxed out because I, oh man, I just made so many errors in play this game. Uh, let's see. And I took behind enemy lines with, with my last one. Mm -hmm. and, and you might be thinking, Drake, if you took two secondaries that require you to stay in your deployment zone, but then you took a third secondary that puts you on the other side of the board, that might counterplay into itself. Right. And normally it does. Grey Knights get around it. I did not play the way to get around it this game. So, <laughs> when I saw his list, oh, he took Psychic Interrogation, which I was like, okay, well, I can probably yeah. deny some of those. I didn't. I didn't. Ooh. Uh, he took Banner. Oh, because he does, banners. he can boost to, like, plus four. Yeah. I actually denied one of his plus four casts. That's awesome. Like a seven. And then he rerolled it and cast on a seven again, and I was like, ooh, deny. <laughs> uh, and, he, and he took Engage on all fronts, which... Um, Actually, no, he did not take Engage on All Friends or Banners. He took Chaos ones, but they didn't have them in the app because it's they're too new. Uh, they huh. didn't have them BCP. I can't remember what he took. Um, but yeah, two other two other ones. Uh, yeah, so I did not put my Storm Raven in reserves this, turn, this game. I, I looked at his list and I'm like, okay, he's got two multi mouthes. I'll wait till he puts down some Hellbrutes and I'll put my Storm Raven outside of what what is Dreadnought's movement five inches or something. No, they I'll move. I think they. I think they move. Seven, six or seven, something like that. Seven, or seven or eight. Yeah. I can't remember. They're not so very I, quick though. I put a. I put a strike squad and interceptor squad in my storm raven, way far away from his halberd. So if he gets turn one, he can't reach him with the one gun that matters, uh, to kill it. So I was like, cool. I'm in a good spot. Uh, I actually no, I did get first turn in this game. Oh, I'm sorry, Chuck. I was wrong. I got first turn every single game except for two. <laughs> and oh. I don't like having first turn. Interesting. Ever. I hate it. That's I like funny. scoring 12 points in round five. Yeah. Because I almost always guarantee that. Yeah, that last round going at, scoring at the end is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So so turn one, fly my Storm Raven over. I nuke one of his hell brutes. Um and I gate of infinity to squad into the backfield to score behind enemy lines on turn mm -hmm. one. Which was cool. I was like, cool, okay, I got this. He's gotta turn around and deal with this. You know, his terminators are gotta gonna go do something stupid. No, he was smart. He just kept pushing his terminator slowly up the board for three turns. Um and I kept just sending like unit after unit into his backfield. And they were just getting killed just to score points. Like I wasn't doing anything with them. Right. He had that ten blob of chosen. Uh, they were inside of a rhino to begin with, with the Master of Executions. Mm -hmm. So turn two, he unloads the rhino, puts the Master of Executions out, fails fails a charge and a reroll charge of a six inch onto my strike squad. And I'm like, sweet, that guy's dead next turn, like guaranteed. Uh, however, his hell brute one shot my Storm Raven. Yeah, he killed it in one hit. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is not supposed to happen with two Melta shots. You're not supposed to kill a Storm Raven. <laughs> That's crazy. Hot yeah, dice. I was, with, I was within six, and he just rolled like a six and a five on his dice, and I was like, "That's it's dead. I can't do anything about this. I'm not going to command reroll for a six. That's ridiculous. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I ignored his Chosen. Like I just kept letting his Chosen eat up a squad at a time, because I'm not going to charge Chosen. They're just going to kill me, and then I lose out on my behind enemy lines points. And they had all those flamers. They had, yeah, they had all the flamers. Um, D6 plus two flamers. 
Yes, yes. And I'm not going to charge into that either. Like, there are just so many reasons to just ignore the Chosen, which was great. They ended up staying in the backfield, just wiping me out every turn. So I, I up the left flank, there's a Storm Raven, there's a Strikes Quest, the Interceptor is just scoring points. And I'm like, shit, all that stuff's dead. He pulled pretty much everything over there. So next turn, I send my, my Grandmaster and my Librarian on the right side to the back to start scoring points where Abaddon was. And I'm like, okay, cool. I can take out some wounds on Abaddon. I'm Grey Knights. <laughs> This is a one phase or a one turn kill on Abaddon. Potentially, yeah. Right. Yeah, and and everything did go right. Shooting, three wounds, easy. Psychic, I had to just cast one spell and took three wounds off of him. Sweet. Uh, and with shooting, I took away his mark of Zinch, and I was like, okay, cool, charging. I had to make a ten inch charge with my paladins to Abaddon to kill him, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is worth it because I take him off two objectives doing this. Right, and then it gives me that board presence on that side, whereas Terminators are swinging the other side. So my paladins charge. I have three of them. They get fifth or let's see, five plus three or five plus four plus four. They get uh, thirteen attacks between three of them. I just need two to go through. I may be two, so I'm putting about a three up. But I'm in tide of convergence, so I just need three sixes to show on my wound dice. And he's just dead. There's nothing you can do about it. So I roll my dice. I hit like every single attack. Paladins hit on two, so they're almost always hitting. I wound like six or seven of them. I don't because I have to wound them on fives because my strength matched his toughness and like mm -hmm. the, the Nurgle gift or whatever. Um, so I actually wounded like six times, and I'm like, okay, cool. On average, this guy dies. I need to punch through one wound, and I had one six show on a die, so I really just needed to fail one die roll, and Abaddon's dead, and I this will swing the game. Um, turns out. Abaddon just makes four up saves, or three up saves, because he has Arm of Contempt. He just made all of his three up saves, and I'm just like, okay, well, those paladins are dead, and I just stepped off my other objective, so I'm scoring zero points next turn. <laughs> it was a big risk. It was a big risk that I took. And, you know, mathematically, the way dice work, he should have died. Sure. Well, <laughs> and you made a 10-inch charge. And I made a 10-inch charge, yeah. Because, like, I, would, I was still on the objective, so if I fail the charge, he has to come to me, which means he steps off his objective right. to do it. So it was it was like a weird trade. The stars like, aligned, and then they scattered. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, I know, I got baited. I got baited by Abaddon. <laughs> but wait, um, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that pretty much was the game at that point. He ended up sweeping his Terminators into my backfield, taking out my two objectives, um, taking down some banners. I uh, ended up scoring really well on secondaries or primaries because I stepped off that point with my paladins. It killed me. I only scored 24 points. Woo! So it was like three turns of eight, and then fifth turn, I scored zero because I stepped off. Ouch. That's, it's interesting because I played Zeke later on Sunday. Uh-huh. So but I'll get to that later, though. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I Yeah, he was a great he was a great, great sport. Great, great opponent. Yeah. I'm scared. He's he's so young, man. He only has up to go, you know? Yeah, he played really well. He did play really well. Yeah. Good mind for the game. So what was the end result? What was the end score? <clears throat> uh, the end score, uh, even even with scoring bad primaries, uh, or it's, yeah, bad primaries, secondaries kind of carried me. I was 71 to 83. Oh, wow. That's uh, a high yeah, point I loss. Kept, I, kept, uh, I kept a lot of my games close, my losses especially. Yeah, I, I did not keep them all close. <laughs> I'm gonna put it that way, and and that's yeah. a that's a great segue into this next match. Oh, there's <laughs> there's some for there's some know, foreshadowing man. for you. <laughs> <laughs> so my game three, and I can't tell you how many buckets of beer I'm in at this point. It was which is no was excuse, sick. no excuse. I played one of. Drake's teammates, Thomas Cavender, and he yes. played Tau. Of you got course. Tau twice on game and on day one too, Chuck. Yep. It's the it's the. Best but wait, there's returns. more. <laughs> so again, remember, ninety five players in the field, only eight Tau, and Drake hit two, and I hit two, and they were all different Tau players, and None they're different Tau. The same Tau players, yeah. Uh, and so Thomas is also playing Tau Sept, Commander, and Cold Star, the un unchargeable one. He had Long Strike. He had Breachers. He had a plasma unit of Crisis Battlesuits, Pathfinder, Hammerhead Gunship. Uh, 
Onva, uh, another commander uh, battle suit, another breacher squad, another unit of battle suits, um, and then stealth suits and a sun shark bomber. So funny enough, his uh, list or oh, you know what we were talking about power level earlier. Zach Zach's orcs list one hundred and nineteen power level. By the way, oh, he uh, beat me by one. Yeah, yeah, crazy. And and Thomas's is one hundred and fourteen. By the way. Um, so, anyways, this game is going to have a little bit to deal with what we're going to talk about later, but, uh, he went first and I redeployed and my dumbass pulled my bikes that were, were, uh, guarding my shield captain who was looking down the barrel of one of his hammerheads because I'm an idiot so on hit only shoot once oh only shoot once. this is coming this is gonna come into play so yeah he shot once he hit he wounded and then did seven wounds to my shield captain out the gate leaving him on two and where he was deployed was way on one of my flanks so on my turn basically i just moved him to get him out of line of sight and there was nowhere for him to go like he couldn't move forward because he would just die because he'd be all by himself so i moved him over and then on his next turn, one of his crisis suits, uh, battle suit uh, commanders, just flew across the board and just obliterated my shield captain. So my shield captain died without doing anything and just moving like two or three inches. And then I did kill his, his, his commander's suit in shooting with my one Achilles. He, I got lucky on the rolls and he didn't make his saves and it's all three damage with the one that I was shooting at him, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I ended up killing him, which is great. But the problem was Thomas played the game really well. What he did was... I pulled my bikes and my Caladius off the board with Castle and Mark. So he pressed me super hard up my one of my flanks. And because I didn't have units on the board, basically he had two turns to just wreck havoc on me. And by the time my bikes made it in and my Caladius made it in, it was too late. I had lost too much too early. I tried to make a game of it. It just, he ended up tabling me, just obliterated me. And it, I took grind banners, and I'm pretty sure I took assassination. I, I this little fuzzy again. I don't remember how many buckets of beer I had at this point. But the end result of the game was 88 to 33. I mean, Thomas just crushed my soul. Like it was brutal, brutal. And and it, again, I'm gonna talk about this later. But like there, like I got frustrated. I got a little salty. But it was nothing to do with Thomas or any of his gameplay. It had all to do with my own drunkenness my own misplays that was it and that was all she wrote like i i feel like for a third game i i, I tossed him a softball i was like here you go and he was just like right out the park oh yeah, it was I, it was great i lined up my my jet bike captain he's over here my other guys will come in one at a time just take them out all you <laughs> and see this is a trap okay so this is where I, like I've caught myself doing this a couple times where I feel like strategic reserves is the way to go, but not having my units on the board for two turns is not ideal at all. Even though in that game with Thomas, I actually did the move where I can come on my board edge because his one of his crisis suits units pushed up so far. He was in like right near there. So I could have put them literally into in, uh, char uh, into engagement range with them because that's how close they were to my board edge. But I, I pulled them away so that I could shoot the rockets to try to kill as much as I could away from them. Because both his crisis use units were pretty close to the to that edge, but one of them was a little too far. So I shot everything at that one and then just obliterated the other one. But it didn't matter. Like, he just had, he had neutered my army so much that I just couldn't recover because I left him off. And it's like, I do this all the time. It's kind of like the trap of putting something in deep strike, thinking it's going to land and then make that nine inch charge. Even with the CP reroll, it's so much of a feel bad. And I can't, I can't tell myself to stop doing it enough. And yet I still do it because I'm like, but it could happen. I can make that nine and I get two chances. No, it's a trap. General Akbar. He tyrannocytes for so long. Oh, two chances to make the nine. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible. So Thomas played a great game and 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 again like any saltiness that i might have exhibited and i try to keep a very positive attitude as you know all the time 
I get frustrated at my own self. I don't get frustrated at my opponents. It's rare. Right. And I haven't really had that. I've had it happen. Let me rephrase. But it's different. And and, and this is a whole thing we're going to talk about later. But that's how my game three went. Thomas kicked my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to talk about like the deep strike reserves thing too. I, I I made that mistake so many times with Grey Knights. You know, putting my Grandmaster in deep strike, putting my other Dread Knight in deep strike. Um, I, I just learned that when I don't put those things on the board, I have nothing to contest on turns one and two. Right. Or right. Well, turn one really, but uh, I I I learned the fine balance of that with the Storm Raven. I, I I learned so much just from this one tournament with strategic reserves and putting one thing in versus putting a bunch of stuff in. I'll almost always still put my librarian in because I can pop him down and basically assassinate one whole unit with him. Right. Wherever I put him down to like clear a flank or clear an objective or something. But yeah, it's it's one of those strategic things that you don't realize you've done wrong until it's too late. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just I mean like I, I would rather just have all my units on the board. And it gives them a lot more targets. But what the thing is, is it gives them the opportunity to pick the wrong targets or to split his fire or whatever the case right. may be. And that makes a huge difference in the game. Yeah, I, I learned this exact lesson in one of my later games, and I'll talk about that uh, on round five. And this, so this, this was the end of day one. This was Friday. So this is the first three games.